What's up, flimsy testies? Happy Friday and welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video. Today we are trying out some Is It Sprite Dragon Blitz. Now, not gonna lie, Sprite Dragon is probably like in my top three favorite Aquaria cards because I love low costed creatures that have the keywords flying and haste, and this one slots perfectly into the Is It Blitz deck. Now, for those who don't know, Blitz started way back in the day with like Kiln Fiend decks and then sort of evolved into uh, when Return of Ravnica came around, it was like Nivix, Cyclops, like Standard and Popper decks. And then it around Oath of Gatewatch, it came back as like the Storm Chaser Mage, Monastery Swiss Beer Prowess decks. And then recently they came back in like Modern and Pioneer with Mono Red with the Bedlam Reveler and um, Soulscar Mage. And people have been um, jamming that a lot on Magic Online. Um, but today we are dipping back into blue to add this Sprite Dragon because I think it fits perfectly. Now, another thing I wanted to address is that Bedlam Reveler is a sweet card and it's become a staple of Blitz. Um, but now that we're dipping back into blue and adding Sprite Dragon and bringing back our boy Storm Chaser Mage, um, and even we're adding Curious Obsession, which doesn't go to the graveyard for Bedlam Reveler and works very well with Sprite Dragon and Storm Chaser Mage, I felt like I didn't have a slot for Bedlam Reveler in here. But if you wanted to brew a version with that, go for it. It works out perfectly fine. We're gonna try out this version and see how it do. So anyways, if you wanted to try out today's deck, you can sign up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off and you can rent today's deck on Magic Online, as well as any future decks we play on the channel. And if you wanted to pick up today's deck in paper, consider purchasing through our decklist link down below. This is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And of course, special thanks to all my patrons who have been scrolling down to the bottom of the screen this whole time. It is because of you guys that this channel is possible, so thank you very much for your support. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. So the new card we're trying today is Sprite Dragon, a 2 mana 1-1 one, one flying haste and whenever you cast a non-creature spell it gets a 1-1 one, one counter. So it's like prowess, but a permanent form of prowess, which is awesome. Now speaking of prowess, going on to our old prowess dudes, we got Monastery Swiss Spear, Soul Scar Mage, and Storm Chaser Mage. Now the only difference is that Monastery Swiss Spear and Storm Chaser Mage have haste, but Storm Chaser Mage has flying, but Soul Scar Mage has this unique ability that gives your burn spells basically wither and shrinks fat creatures to make it easier to deal with them. Now speaking of burn spells, we do have Shock and Wild Slash as our one mana versions, and then our Bolts and Lightning Strike and Wizard's Lightning. Now, Wizard's Lightning costs two less to cast if we control a wizard. We only have eight wizards, which is why we don't have four of these. For consistency's sake, our wizards are Storm Chaser Mage and Soul Scar Mage. But yeah, the potential of being at a Lightning Bolt and Pioneer is awesome. Now, onto our card advantage, we got Curious Obsession, which is an aura. Gives plus one, plus one. When it deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. As long as we can connect one time with this, it makes it all worthwhile. However, it opens you up to potential two for ones, but Is It Blitz is definitely a high risk, high reward deck. Opt is opt, needs no explanation. Treasure crews, after casting things like opt and a bunch of burn spells, it can be relatively easy to delve out and draw you three cards, refill you, draw you more burn spells for that reach. We got a total of 19 lands. Don't need too many in a deck like this, especially with things like opt. Now onto the sideboard, we got a couple copies of spell pierces for cheap interactive decks, searing blazes to stay aggressive and beat out the cheap little weenie decks. We got two copies of smash to smithereens in case we need to destroy artifacts, but also continue to burn our opponent. Two copies of mystical dispute against blue control, a play set of brazen borrowers against decks that run fatties because it's hard to burn them out. So you're going to want to bounce them and also get an evasive dude. And then three copies of, uh, uh, Scab Clan Berserker, which is like an Eidolon of the Great Revel, but only for your opponent because Eidolon would kind of hurt us a bit. So against decks that are heavy on the non-creature spells and we can get in there and punish them for casting those kinds of things. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Got a game here against Kaiser Chronic and yes, we're going to be on the play with some Sprite Dragon Blitz and that seems okay. It doesn't have a one drop, but if I can successfully get into Curious Obsession hit with the Sprite Dragon, uh, we will... We will be good to go. That's all it would take. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, did you already complete all the Fursona fabrications? Yes. We do those on the spot. I'm going to save that opt because I'm going to wait for the Sprite Dragon to come down. Oh no! Don't Inquisition or Thought Seize me. Okay, that better be an opt. If it's a push, I'm gonna be so sad. Because I'm going for Sprite Dragon here.
Oh man, if I don't top a creature, we are as good as dead. We are as good as dead if we don't top a creature. All we needed was that one sprite dragon. Don't thought erasure me. Dude, this is the absolute counter matchup. I'm not looking forward to this. Is mono removal. It's hard for us to beat because then we have to win via burn spells. They take curious obsession. It's fine. We had a lot of redundancy anyways. I drew another one anyways because that's how Moto works. Whenever you get Thoughtseize, you're always going to top deck what they Thoughtseize. I right, drew another Spike Dragon. Let's play it. And get in there for one. It's weird how Moto works like that. You get Thoughtseize and you top deck whatever, whatever they took. I mean, that's certainly a good thing, but bad when you're playing Thoughtseize. <laughs> It's like the Moto Scry bug, in a way. Don't have a second push. Wizard's Lightning. Um, Alright, let's Curious Obsession on the Sprite Dragon. I should have opted first, just in case I hit like a Swift Spear. Don't you dare have a second push. You really have a set. Oh, they were just goofing with me right there. Did you see that? They tapped and untapped there to try to spook me. All right, I'm going to kill their Jace. But I don't want them flipping their Jace and getting that fatal pushback. But I know they're probably going to have like a murderous rider here or something. We drew a lightning strike, which is decent. I want another creature though, like a storm chaser mage or something. Ooh, Esper. Reflector mage. Treasure Cruise. Alright, um, how many stuff? We got five in the grave. So let's opt here to try to find a creature. Mountain to the bottom. Shiv and Reef. Treasure Cruise, delving everything. Nothing. Alright. But at least we have a bunch of good things to do next turn with Sprite Dragon. I probably shouldn't have played the Shiv and Reef and should have waited because I could have played that, that uh, Spire Bluff Canal and done an extra spell. Now I can only do two things next turn rather than three. I'm not going to kill the Reflector Mage though. I think it's time to just go all at their face and try to end the game because I have, what, eight points of burn in hand? So, yeah. If I can hit them for three with creatures. Oh, General Kudro! Sacrifice to humans to a creature. Alright, I see what's happening here. We all see what's happening here. Ooh, Storm Chaser Mage. White, red, Sprite Dragon. Um. Red, blue, Storm Chaser. Go to combat, get in there. Wild slash them. All right, they're down to five. We got lethal with our burn spells, so they have to try to kill us here. What you got? As for humans, yeah, this is spicy. Although I don't like the fact that they've got thought season, thought erasure, and push. It makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Dig through Timmy, looking for a push, but the push ain't gonna help you now. You like tribal decks? I'm not really a fan of tribal decks unless it's like snake tribal. I'm a big fan of snake tribal um, and, and mirror tribal and uh, but yeah, overall, as far as tribes go, not really that big of a fan. I've always wanted to build Sashiro the Anointed, because Sashiro's my boy. You see that boy? Sashiro is hot. I would totally date Sashiro. If I was, like, in the magic world, my boyfriend, my husband, would definitely be Sashiro the Anointed. 100%. Alright, we got there. On to game two, against Esper Humans. Uh, Mystical Dispute does counter some things. 
Um, I don't think I need Scab Clan Berserker. Maybe I do. It has Renown. Okay, I'll try it. They they seem kind of kind of non-creature heavy. They have a little bit of creatures, but they seem pretty non-creature heavy. Treasure Cruise actually feels like a good late game piece here. I think that Curious Obsession honestly is a little risky in a matchup like this where they got a lot of removal. And then I'll just cut one like shock. Cat Tribal? Oh yeah, of course. Crimson Claws uh, is uh what what wait, are you a cougar or a jaguar? What what are you, Crimson Claw? What is your species? Okay, that looks great. Let's keep that. But General Kudro does stop my treasure cruise, so that's going to be scary. Oh. Domestic black cat? Oh yeah, you're the kitty boy who wears a collar. Gets punished. If you know what I mean. <laughs> Okay, I'm definitely wild slashing that. Ooh, and a soul scar mage. All right, shock there. Get a prowess. Get in there for two. Come on, deck. Give me that third land for the scab clan. No collar. So you'd wear one for you. <laughs> Nice. Hero Precinct 1. Okay, now we see what's happening here. But I'm definitely just going to shock it. And I want to get stuff in my grave for Treasure Cruise, so I will just shock their face here for damage. And, uh, they sweep the board here. I'll at least be able to Treasure Cruise. They're down to 7. The Scab Clan would be so nice to Renown. Come on. They will faster. That enters tap so they can't play Kudro. Dire Tactics. And they're down... They, they're down to five? If you don't control... If you don't control a human, you lose life because of that creature's toughness. Oh, that's good for me. And now they're tapped out. Yo, the Scab Clan's gonna kill them. The Scab Clan is gonna kill them here. Because it's gonna Renown. And now if they cast anything, they die. Anything they cast will kill them now. <laughs> so they are locked. We got them by the balls here. Now they can only win by a form of creatures. So what is it that they need? Like a lone missionary? Yeah, Reflector Mage. That, that is actually the one thing that will save them here. That is actually the one thing that saves them. So they got, they got what they needed. Um, let us opt. Try to find a burn spell. That's a shock, putting it on top. And shock your face. Sweet. Wow. Felt like it was a good matchup for them, but we somehow destroyed them. Too quick. Way too quick. Got a game here against Simply Skilled, and we won the die roll. We're going to play first with some... Buddy once told me. With some... Uh, is it Sprite Blitz? What is that? What is that 7-Up? What if it was 7-Up Blitz? What if it was 7-Up Dragon? I really wish I had a blue land, but we're going to have to mulligan that one because it doesn't do a lot. This one, I'm going to keep it because it's got Curious Obsession. I feel like I'm going to throw away Treasure Cruise because that thing's not useful till later. Being on the play definitely helps here to get in a hit with the Curious Obsession, although I really hope that... um. Uh, what's going on here? Let's see what they're on. Oh, wait, they have a companion. Let me see. Oh, no. Okay, it's Guy Ruta. But, um, we're on the play, so maybe we can be quick enough. I do need to hit my lands, though. It'd be very sad if I didn't. Oh, I hit my land. That's good. Curious Obsession up on Soul Scar Mage. 
And I'm going to Wizards Lightning their face. And just go all in on this one dude. Because is it, or not is it, what is called Simic Gyruda doesn't do... It doesn't really run removal, so we should be clear in the open to just swing out as hard as we can. Um, yeah. I'm still kind of salty that I brewed up that Simic clone Garuda deck, and then every single other person had the same idea and started brewing the same thing. And now what, what I brewed isn't unique anymore. <laughs> If nobody else did it, best believe I would have it on the channel already. Paradise Druid. I drew another one. That's good. Can I get another land? Nope. But I do like second Curious Obsession here. Getting there for four. Wild Slash their face. Drawn a couple cards. Sprite Dragon, can I get a land? The land. Alright, so now if I draw another land off the top, I'm going to be able to just double Lightning Strike. So they have an actual chance to win. If they can produce a Chump Blocker. Is it, if they can produce two creatures here and just Chump Block one, Chump Block with one, then yeah, it'll be over. Four mana for a Vizier of Many Faces to copy their Paradise Druid. But now if I Lightning Strike their other Paradise Druid, they won't have enough mana to go off. Oh, but that'll be enough right there. Don't even have to think about it. <laughs> nice. Six you in the face. Don't even have to swing. Sweet as a Khajiit. Is there any sweet Khajiits, though? If you go all throughout the land of Skyrim, can you find one sweet Khajiit? Maybe there's at least one in the caravan that's sweet. Uh, so against Gyruda, we definitely want Mystical Dispute. And, um, that is it. So Mystical Dispute, and I could bring in, um, Brazen Borrower, so that when they get Kologon and go to combat, I can bounce Kologon, and then all of a sudden their stuff is summoning sick, and that'll give me the extra turn I need to burn them out. Although I don't think I'm gonna have the time to hold that up, but Treasure Cruise is definitely too slow here. Never gonna have the time to delve that out, so let's go ahead and submit it with the Mystical Disputes to counter Guy Rudas. Um, that looks pretty good. It's not quite aggressive enough, so I'm hoping to draw, like, a Wizard's Lightning or a Curious Obsession or something. But it looks okay. I love how their, their username is simply skilled, even though they're playing a deck that requires no skill. That's kind of funny. All it is is just play a ramp, dude. Play a ramp, dude. Gyruda, win. So there's no, there's no skill involved. However, they probably played a skillful deck before this one. I, I respect that. All right. At least we don't have any mana issues here. Always play the summoning sick dude first. Pending. Zolfrin Void. Zolfrin Void's a really pretty card, and I'm so happy I have a foil of those. Alright, get out Storm Chaser McGee. 
get in there for this many. Couple more ram dudes and then Gyruda next turn. Alright, Spark double to clone a Sylvan carry added so that they can guarantee Gyruda. Can I get a mystical dispute? Wizard's Lightning. Well, that's pretty good actually. So let's go Swiss Pier. And let's get in for as much as we possibly can. They could have freely blocked something because we can only get two total prowess triggers here. There's no zero drop instance. Alright, get in for as much as we can. All right, F6. How much damage is that? What are they at? They are at four. Okay. And I can't quite get lethal no matter how I untap. I'm gonna need them to just literally whiff the very first Gyruda trigger. Oh wait, they have to shock here. So now I can top deck a burn spell if they whiff and don't kill me. So let's see what happens. Here we go. Hold on to your butts. Okay, they hit a Vizier, so they can Legend Rule and get another one. Legend Rule's not bad, that's a reroll. We just need them to not hit a Spark Double. And... They hit a Paradise Druid. That was their only hit. Okay, so it's not bad. We have more chances. And Gyruda doesn't fly, does it? It'd be insane if it did. Very insane card. Oh, they scoop it up. Wait, why did they scoop it up? We're only going to be able to hit them. Wait, can I go back? Let me go back. Okay, yeah, the Storm Chaser Mage off the top is going to get it. All right, sweet. Taking down Gyruda. Nice. That deck is like turn four win, but apparently we're also... They can't whiff at all. That deck you really got to not whiff. Things can just go really bad when that deck whiffs because it's at the perfect turn where the opponent can have a sweeper like a Supreme Verdict or something or a Kaya's Wrath, which there's a little bit of here and there. Got a game here against Miong, and yes, we're going to be on the play and with some Is It Blitz, and that looks good. I'm going to keep that. That's a lot of Swifties. That's a lot of Swifties, but you know what? Ain't nothing wrong with too many Swifties. I would like a third land, though, so next turn, or next, next turn, I can go... Um, Oh wait, that doesn't make any sense. Just don't produce a good blocker. Um, does it make sense to go double Swiss here to get in for more? I think it does. I'm only gonna be able to do one play next turn, but that's how it would be regardless of what I do. Because if I went, uh, because I would, if I went Sprite Dragon this turn. Then I think next turn I would still want to go double Swift Spear instead of going Swift Spear Lightning Strike. Because I want to get out the bodies first. Every time you see an island, you shiver. You know it's coming. Harbinger of the Tides. Of course. Wild Slash, nice. Alright, Sprite Dragon. And I guess this is our time to Wild Slash here. The next turn we can go Swiss Spear plus uh, Lightning Strike. Now, Mono Blue Tempo is the most, ado uh, annoying, the most annoying deck in Pioneer. But with this cheap, these cheap burn spells and our cheap creatures, we should be able to overcome it. This is probably going to be the least annoying Mono Blue Tempo has ever been. Until they play Master of Waves and it's got Pro Red. So uh, next turn we'll be pretty annoyed. But for now, we're good. Oh, that's obnoxious. Okay, we'll go Sprite Dragon. And then we'll just, uh, when they go to block, I'll just opt. Yeah, they had to try it. They're not going to try it? Alright, cool. Then I'll just opt and get in there for six. And then I have a Lightning Strike to bring them to one. And they got to produce blockers. So their, their best play, their best bet is probably got to be like... Um, what do you call that card that locks down a creature? Tidebinder Mage? Probably that. And lock down my dragon. But then they're still pretty screwed. 
Master Waves would be the best play here, but Sprite Dragon still gets it, and they don't have it. Sweet, going on to game number two. And uh, in game number two, I don't think I need Spell Pierce. Do I need Mystical Dispute? Probably yes. And uh, Brazen Borrower, I don't really need. Searing Blood's great. Um, we'll cut Treasure Cruise because it's slow. And we'll cut um, a couple Ops because they're filler. And then we'll run it like that. What is, uh, what is that, Crimson Claw? What is that link? Six of your mama jokes in the queue. Been busy as of late, been meaning to drop by and support the stream more often. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good, Uncle DB. There's a lot of people who stop by the stream. It's okay if you if you can't make it by. Right, we're gonna keep that one. Looks pretty good. All right, Spire Bluff Canal. Soul Scar Mage. Ooh, I have a curious obsession. So next I'm gonna go Swiss Spear plus obsession, and pray they don't leave up a Merfolk Trickster. I'm I smell Merfolk Trickster. I just smell it. I don't think I'm gonna go for Curious Obsession here. I think I'm just gonna go Monastar Swiss Bear, get in and opt. Because I smell it a mile away. Oh, they're just taking it. Alright, let's opt. Um, Soul Scarb Mage, I think I'm going to top that. I think I want that. Next turn, Soul Scarb Mage plus Curious Obsession. Saving all the burn spells for the very late game can just be really good because you can surprise them out of nowhere with all the burn spells you've been saving, so. Exclusion Mage, that's an interesting choice. They have a million ways to stop this Curious Obsession, but I'm still going to do it. I put the Curious Obsession on the flyer. And get in there. <gasps> I heard a quack. There is quack too, you know. Anybody want to use quack too? Quasi duplicate, sure. <laughs> quack too is great. Um, all right, let's just go Sprite Dragon plus Storm Chaser Mage. Get the flyers back out there. How come nobody does exclamation point banjo? That's the best one. Now I need a banjo emote. Spark double. What is this? Why does that one not work? Oh, it's because you guys, you all have a global cooldown. I like how it all came in the same order. Look at the quacks. It goes Mater, Hazardek, Phil, Crimson Claw. Then it did the same thing. But you guys have a one minute cooldown, so you gotta wait a second. Where's the Kazooie? <laughs> there it was. I missed it though in my ear. Um so play a thing. Play a sprite dargon. Get in here. Uh lightning strike you. And wizards lightning you? The spell. All right, well, you know what? A wizard's lightning you, and that's still lethal. GG. <laughs> Burning him out completely. Now, that was the weirdest Mono Blue Tempo deck I've ever seen. Exclusion Mage, Harbinger of the Tides, and they're just trying to quasi-duplicate that thing and clone it with Spark Double. This, there has to be something up with this deck. Like, it's not a Gyruda deck, so I don't know. I don't know. Are we getting the JJs in the chat? Oops. EG.
Exclusion Mage Tribal. Blue Bounce. Oh. It's just Mono Blue Bounce. It's meant to go up against creature decks and, like, bounce all the creatures and, you know, win by devotion, I guess. But uh, our creatures were hasty, so it didn't really work out for them. I feel like their deck would be so brutal against a deck that has all summoning sick creatures, which is most decks. But our creatures were all flying hasters, so they got around their bounds. That's cool. Got a game here against ABAB MX55, and we won the die roll. We're going to play first with some Simic, not Simic, is it? Sprite, Coca-Cola Coca Blitz. Oh, that's very, very questionable. I'm gonna mull. Oh, I really wish I had a creature. I think I gotta go to five here. I'll keep this one. Throw away a shock and a wild slash. Oh, this is a tap land too. I don't know about this one. I'm thinking I might have to scoop it up and not reveal any information. If I don't get a land here... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Turn off all auto yields. If they thought sees me... Favorite Hoplite. At least I can Wild Slash that, but I bought him a Shock and a Wild Slash, so if they play a Sram, I'm gonna be so sad. Um... I'm just gonna pass. Or you know what? Hold on. I think I have to take risk here to get in this game. So what I'm going to do is opt for a land and then just hold up Wild Slash once I hit my land here. I did hit my land. Nice. Alright, once they go for an Aura, that's when I'm going to go for the Wild Slash. So we were talking about the F. Mary kill with Obosh, Luris, and Karuga. And I decided on F. Luris because look at Luris, of course. And then, um, marry Abosh, and then kill Karuga. Now, the reason marry Abosh is because he's Rakdos. He's probably got that, that demon hierarchy kind of thing going on where he can, like, he's very powerful and can, and can show you the, show you the whole world and experience power. And... And then kill Karuga because he's a, he's a macro. So you know what macro means? It means very, very large. Huge. Why would you marry something that is literally a thousand times bigger than you? Like, that's, that's my reasoning there. Kill Luris, marry a Bosch, F Karuga. But, dude, how are you going to F Karuga when he's literally, like, 10,000 times bigger than you? He's a macro sage. Do you know what macro means? You must not be a furry. Sentinel's eyes, they get lifelink. Okay, well, I'm going to have to shrink that with the burn spell. i got to draw um, a wizard's lightning. All that glitters? Okay, I'm going to scoop it up. Well, yeah, I mulliganed to five and had a tap land on the first turn, so we can definitely win this match. Uh, Brazen Borrower is going to be amazing here to reset their auras, and uh, Spell Pierce can counter some auras, I guess. I don't know if I want that, though. Uh, Searing Blood is going to be good. And we can cut Treasure Cruise and Ops. Spell Pierce is okay, but I feel like I'm just going to try to kill whatever creatures they put their stuff on. Why would you not F Luris? He's the most, he's the most F worthy out of all of them. Just look. And where, where are you going to F a Bosch? Come on. Where are you going to F a Bosch? But Luris, he's the only one you can. Okay. Let's like play first. Yes. Got a mulligan the zero lander. Keep this one. Keep all the burn spells. So I guess that means we're throwing away Storm Chaser Mage, right? I don't like it, but it makes the most sense. K 
keep that brazen borrower because if they somehow commit a bunch to a creature, I'm going to have to bounce it. Kill Luris because it's killing magic. Marry a Bosch because you're odd. And it doubles my damage. F. Karuga because it's thick. But it's too thick. You're, you won't satisfy Karuga at all when he's 10,000 times bigger than you. You're, he's not even going to notice you're there. Um... Well, I'm going to have to shock this and get in. What I have to do here is just kill every creature they play. I know it doesn't make best use of my mana, and I wanted to play Storm Chaser there, but I can't, because if they're going to start committing to that lifelinker, it's going to get too big. That I'll also have to deal with. Come on, Dad, give me a land. I want to be able to go Swifty plus Petty Theft. Six soul, six soul day. Thank you very much for the tier one sub for four months in a row. Welcome back to the marination. Enjoy the emotes yet again. Thank you for your generosity. Come on, commit another aura. That's what I wanted to see. Give me a land, deck. Give me a land. And not have it be a sulfur falls. Dang it. Alright, well, petty theft. Whoa, that brazen borrower is in the way. What if you just F Luris to death? There you go, two birds with one stone. How's quarantine going? Uh it's been it's been okay. I really miss playing magic, but I get to still play it online for you guys. So that's that's the positive. I haven't been getting groceries as much. I haven't been going out to get food as much. I haven't been going to play magic every Thursday. And haven't hung out with any friends, so. There's definitely some things, but I get to stream more, and I do, I, I do definitely want to stream a lot more, so. It kind of, it's kind of a blessing in disguise, but I still miss playing Magic, but I do definitely, I did definitely want to stream more. Um, and I do stream six days a week now. Oh yeah, that's right, they have Loris as a companion. Alright, well, we'll go... Probably just flash and Brazen Borrower here, because it hits the most in the air. But now they, with the Karuga, or with the Loris, look at that Loris. See, you can, you wouldn't want to F that. You would rather F Karuga, who you can't even do. So now with Luris in the Black White Ceram deck, they can just start getting stuff back. Oh man, my background is very noisy. Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on a second. I will be right back. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. What's happening here? This is the main phase. They got back the Griff's Boon on the Luris. Now the question is, do they want to swing with the Luris? I need another Brazen Bar where to bounce Luris here. All that glitters on the Life Linker, dude. Obnoxious as a Gear Hulk. 
Mana screw strikes again. Mana screw sucks, dude. It really does. If I'd hit my lands on curve, it would be a much different game. Because I really have to deal with uh, with that Luris, but then again, now I really have to deal with this fat life linker. So, and I also need to top deck another brazen borrower here, or I lose. It's not a brazen borrower. Yeah, that hateful Eidolons is gonna hit me, and I die. All right, that'll do it. GG. Got a game here against the Battle the Rifle. I think we've actually played against. Oh no, is this blue white control? If this is blue white control, I'll just quit out. But let's keep that. I think we played against Battle the Rifle a few months ago, because that sounds very familiar. Because it made me think of Halo. Okay, Arboreal Grazer. It's a beast. Why is this a beast? Why is it not a monkey? Come on, Magic the Gathering. But that's going to be an annoying blocker once Kahira comes out. A shock here. I have a good feeling we'll be able to actually get in hit with this Curious Obsession. Yo, shout out to them for playing different bordered basics, but that's a really cool looking basic. See, why don't these exist IRL? I would buy all of those in foil. No swings. The shock here. It's curious obsession. And let's shock Kahira. There's a treasure cruise, which we're nowhere near yet, but we'll be pretty soon, actually. Like, because we got off in Lightning Strike. This is 100% going to be a chump block, and then they're going to proceed to Stasis Snare it. I guarantee it. And them still being at 20 life is going to be rough. It looks like they're actually taking on the fact they want to block or not. They're actually taking it. Wow, they really want to keep their Arboreal Grazer. I think their thought process is if they don't chump now, they'll be able to chump it next turn if I don't get any prowess. I drew a Swiss Spear. That's good. Too late to show. Turns your username into a bad calculus formula. Love their Odyssey planes. Yeah, I, uh, I, so I have a, a Patreon tier where I send you a signed card, and I send somebody one of these signed. It was probably one of the nicer things I gave away. The Lightning Bolt Planes. Alright, Double Voice Resurgence is going to be very hard to crack. Um, yeah, that's going to be a difficult one to beat. Yikes, how am I going to fight through double voice? That's going to be a little bit difficult. Um, well, do I just go Swiss Spear and then hold up Lightning Strike or something? Or do I just go op Lightning Strike when they uh, attempt to double block with the voices? I mean, that's probably what I do, right? Because I expect them to double block with voices here. Ooh, just chumping. Um, okay, in that case, I'll opt and then just play Swift Spear. Yes. Another Treasure Cruise. I don't need a second one right now. Swifty, and then pass a turn. I'm going to F6. They know I'm not casting anything on their turn here. Oh, they can just play three Kahiras in the main deck and then three in the... There. That's crazy. All right. All right. Let's wild slash the Kahira. Don't Dramoka's Command. Don't have Dramoka's Command be your last card, please. Thank you. 
Um, go to combat. Get in there with both. They're probably going to double block the little one, I would assume. Double blocks that one. All right, well, I will proceed to lightning strike their face. Kill both of their elementals. They turn into two twos. Yep, now I have to hope they don't draw any more creatures, and I got to kill those things before they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm going to be able to treasure cruise next turn for four mana, then have one left. I really got to draw some more cheap burn spells and kill these things quick and hope they don't grow into three threes or perhaps four fours here. Rhymaz. Wait. Can it say cats also? Oh man, it could even be cats. Oh boy. It's obnoxious. Wild Slash, so close. So, so, so close. Well, what do? What do? I can Wild Slash. Man, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna swing both here. I'm gonna swing both. Come on, block on both. Blocks there. So I will wild slash there. Or you know what? Oh no, we're definitely gonna die, aren't we? I need a chump blocker. Because the Brimaz is going to get in, make a thing that's attacking, and then they're going to get in for Xaxi 7, because the thing enters, uh, that's attacking. So, yeah, I'm going to be Xaxi's dead, so I have to, I have to trade off their elemental here. And then I have to treasure cruise and pray to hit a one-drop creature that can chump block. Or another wild slash. I draw an extra card here, it's another curious obsession. Treasure cruise away. I can hit a two-drop creature as well. So treasure cruise away, bunch of stuff, get another prowl trigger, draw three. Come on, burn spell. Oh, burn spell. Oh, you know, this is kind of a bummer because I have so much burn that can just go with their face here, but I have to kill, I have to kill their elemental here. You know, in reality, I probably should have lightning strike that elemental, even though it just made better use of the mana so next turn I'd be able to. Oh, what is this? The one that gives tappers, makes everything into a tapper? That's going to tap down my swift spear and then I won't be able to get in. So that's kind of obnoxious. Alright, so basically... Basically we're dead. That's what we're getting at here. They can attack and tap. Yeah, I'm just one short. Taps it down and... Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. I can get them to literally one life here. One life. But can't quite get them to zero. Alright, GG. But we're going on to game two and I can bring in the Searing Bloods. Searing Bloods gonna be good here. And Brazen Borrower is not bad. I kind of like Brazen Borrower. On the play especially. Let's cut Treasure Cruise and Ops. Seems good. Don't you have exact sizes there? Exact sizes? No, no, no. I, I didn't have a wizard. So, and also they had the tapper that tapped down my attacker. So, if I even if I had six mana and went with Swiss Beer, they would have just chump blocked. Their 1-1. One, one. Well, yeah, I didn't have any wizards. Swiss Spears are monks. We're gonna play first.
Really wish I had a second land, but I'm gonna have to mulligan this one. That one looks better. I think I'm gonna have to throw away a land here and keep all my burn. Throw away Shiva and Reef. You know what would be really cool? If they had Whisperwood Elemental in their deck. That would be amazing. I want to build a Kahira Whisperwood deck. Sweet. Whisperwood Elemental is one of the most underrated creatures. Alright, deck, give me Curious Obsession. Oh, I just got something in my eye. Ooh, Wizard's Lightning. I'm expecting uh, Dramoga's Command or, you know, like, uh, something like that. But I'm going to attempt to just burn them all out here. Because I have a flyer. They don't have any flying blockers, so might as well attempt it. They're down to eight. I'm getting close. And they had nothing to do there. Sweet. Kajir, Kaji, Kanjali Sunwing. All right, let's get in there for one. They block. All right, so let's lightning strike them and a wild slash them. You know, now that I think about it, I could have gotten for one more damage if I just lightning strike that Kanjali Sunwing. Oh no, it would have been the same. All right, now we're in top deck mode. Can we top deck the burn spells? We already found five of our burn spells. We have 12 more in the deck. Actually, no, no, we have 10 more in the deck. Hong Clo Tribunal. So now we're definitely in top deck mode. Come on, Wizard's Lightning. <gasps> yes! Yes! We luck sacked. That was ultimate luck sackage. And that was a mulligan, too. That was a mulligan. Alright, let's run it right back. And this time, let's not mulligan. I don't think we can afford to. Thanks for the hundred tiggle biddies. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna buy myself some chocolate with that. Ooh. I like Sprite Dragon and I love Searing Blaze here. I'm just gonna Searing Blaze their Kahira. A victory, cheers! No! Leyline of Sanctity. That's a bummer, because I have four burn spells in my hand, so that really sucks. That's hecka rude. Who plays Leyline of Sanctity and Pioneer? Come on, dude, who plays Leyline and Pioneer? Like, you're not a combo deck. You're not a combo deck. You have no reason to play Leyline of Sanctity. The only reason to play Land of Sanctity is if you have a very fragile combo that you really cannot afford to get thought seized against. So it's super weird. They're playing in green white elementals, but hey, it worked. I can't complain. But yeah, I think that that is a definite deck building error on their part, even though it's working here. I think that's a definite deck building error. All right, Kahira is out. At least Searing Blaze still works. You know, I don't expect them to play another... I do not expect them to play another Elemental Lord here to get out of Searing Blood range. So let's actually just play some more Flying Hasters. Don't tell me this has Reach. It's got Vigilance. Okay. I'm turn off all audios just in case I need to uh, Wizards Lightning something. Coco? Is this, is this Coco? Main phase Coco? 
Conclave Tribunal. Alright, let's see what they target. Sprite Dargan. Uh... You know, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna Wizards Lightning it. I feel like I'll have a... I'll have a target later for the Searing Blaze. Ooh, that's good. That's really good. So it's Curious Obsession. Here. Double Prowess. Now we get in for five and draw a card. And the f it's fine. It's actually really fine that they have Leyline because I can just throw all these burn spells at their creatures. That's fine too. So many burn spells here. Watch them have actually have Whisperwood. No shocks. Another Conclave Tribunal thing. Bummer. I was going to Lightning Strike myself here, but I don't think I will. I feel like I'm going to need it for their creatures. It'll buy me time, if anything. I just got to find more of my own creatures. And I did side out Treasure Cruises, so that's not something we can look forward to. Hello. Initial Duck, thank you so much for the follow. Can we get some duckies in the chat for Initial Duck? Ooh, Brazen Borrower. Um... <laughs> Thank you so much for the, for the quank. So I kind of actually want to Brazen Borrower to bounce the thing that has Sprite Dragon under it first. I can probably freely double Lightning Strike here, right? I probably don't even have to Lightning Strike. But I'm going to regret not killing that bronze side lion. I know it. Or you know what? No, 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 no. I brazen borrower their, their ley line and then start burning their face. That's what I do. Yeah, so I literally end a turn petty theft uh their ley line and then i lightning strike their face which i should have done that combat but i missed it so please tap out here we got this because we can triple lightning strike them that's fine i guess all right let's see if they have an answer to this petty theft their ley line And lightning strike them. Now we go to combat. They have no tapper right now. And this doesn't have reach. Getting for one? Are we getting there? Lightning strike you? And lightning strike you? Is that it? Did we do it? Come on. Don't have Dramokas. Yeah! Yo! Clutched it out. Wow. I wish I saw that Brazen Borrower play a turn before, but I got it a little too close to comfort there. But that's gonna do it. Man, their deck is actually really good. Except that I don't... Like, Conclave Tribunal is a little awkward, but it works. I, I think I'd rather run just like cast out or something that can actually cycle.
Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games, unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. I'll let you know that there is one single game that did not make it into the video because it was pure mana screw. And I think that matches where you literally play zero lands or all lands doesn't make for good content. But if you want to go check that out, Twitch link is down below. So um, we're speeding up the next, I believe it was like six rounds today. No, we're speeding up the next five, I believe. Um, and a lot of the, I know there was like, I think we had one loss in the not sped up games, but there's going to be a couple more here because... All of the, for some reason, I don't know why it was like this, but the losses were way, way longer than the wins. And I think the reason why is because it would just, the opponent, like, because we're an aggro deck, right? And if we're not conceding and we're trying to top deck burn spells and we don't concede, the games are just going to go long because the opponent's just literally stabilizing. And stabilizing takes a while. So that's why the, I think the losses were way longer than the wins. But good example right here. First game we're going up against blue white control. And you know we always dread blue-white control because, you know, blue-white control things happen. If you play Magic the Gathering, if you played Magic the Gathering for more than a couple months, you know hashtag just blue-white control things. Um, so game number one and two, I believe it was, we crushed them totally, game one. Game two, they ended up stabilizing and controlling us out. Game three, we got so close, dude. Every time, so close. But they got the luckiest one-two punch here. One-two, three punch. It was like a three punch. It was like this turn right here is where they go um, Dovin's Veto to counter our spell, which was going to be very, very clutch and kill them. Dovin's Veto, they top decked into Dig Through Time as their last card. And then not only that, but they also had authority, the consoles, to follow up with to make it so that any future creature that we draw is going to gain them a life and get them out of shock or wild slash range. So, like, they had such a low... They had, like, three card hand the whole time. And they had, at the very end of it, the luckiest one, two, three punch ever. So, shoutouts to them. Uh, we're going to go into the next game. This was against Mono Black... No, wait. No, this wasn't Mono Black. This was Black White um, Yorion. So, it was the Black White Doom Foretold deck. And now, this is where I would say, if you've been playing Pioneer for a few months... Uh, you might have seen this around here and there. It is not too often that you see it, but the Black White Doom for Toll deck is really something. But now, uh, with Yorion being printed in the in the Companion Zone, they can just play it and flicker all of their enchantments and all of their things that have ETB abilities. Like they, in the first game, we saw Trial of Ambition. In uh, game two, we see that they have things like Demonic Pact and stuff like that. Like Demonic Pact is really cool with Yarion, by the way, if you're playing Black White Enchantments, because Yarion is literally a guaranteed way in the companion slot to reset the Demonic Pact, and that is nuts. Super crazy. So game number two, it goes, it's a little bit more difficult for us because Birth of Melodis is pretty dang good against us. Makes a fat blocker that's hard for our ground dudes to get around, and it sucks to have to waste a turn attacking into that thing and bolting that thing. Um, when they're just going to like they fetch their basic land and gain two life off of it as well for two mana That's crazy value and then like they end up stabilizing because of that And then they play the Elspeth's nightmare kill my board and I just can't get there So we're going on to the last game of this round and the last game of this round Let's see what happens, but I think that what happened was they just didn't find their Kaya's Wrath. We saw Kaya's Wrath in game number two, and it swept us up, and it was very difficult to stabilize from that point um, to come back from that. So I was just really hoping for no Kaya's Wrath. Now, I put the... Um, I, I was holding up the uh, Spell Pierce that time, but I could have put the Curious Obsession on my Sprite Dragon, but I put it on my Ground Creature instead, which it was difficult to fight through that Birth of Melodis wall. Um, but when they get to the four mana... Uh, spot they did not have the Kaya's Wrath. They went the Pegasus, which I killed, and then Demonic Pack, which they didn't have the time to activate. So we got there against Black White Doom Foretold Yorion Enchantments, which is definitely a deck that needs further investigation if you're into Pioneer. It seems like really awesome, especially with Yorion being able to flicker the Demonic Pact in that command zone. So now we're going on to the next game. This is against Mono Black Devotion. And I totally, just like these games, I'm trying my hardest. I'm really earning this win. 
And then all it takes for them is just, oh, I'm going to play Cabal Stronghold and then make a bunch of mana because of I have a bunch of swamps and then I'm going to torment you for a million. So it's like right here, I totally had, look at that, they're at one. I totally had it. And it's just like, nope, I have Cabal Stronghold, yee. And then I have Torment of Hailfire and then now you just lose 18 life. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so now we're going on to the next game. Or It's still the same round, but game number two. And I believe this is one where I... I think I got this one, yeah, because I got the I got to be on the play this time and being on the play and I could just attack it in that gifted Aetherborn and shrink it because I have a the Soul Scar Mage and then they do not find a languish or anything like that. I'm not even sure if they have languish, but I got the uh, old aggro draw with two uh with three creatures and burn spells. And being on the play that that's been like all day it's been winning for us every time being on the play and having that kind of a draw with like three creatures and some burn spells. Um, but now being on the draw, game three, it's a little bit more scary because they're going to have the, the head start and the removal. Now check this out. They start Murderous Rider, okay? And then the next thing they do, Vraska's Contempt, which also gains them two life. And then they play the Murderous Rider, which I have to waste the burn spell on or else they'll gain more life. And then they play a Dread Presence and start killing our stuff and gaining life whenever they play Swamps and draw on cards. And then I play another thing and they have a second Vraska's Contempt, Exile it, gain life. Then I play another thing and they Ravenous Chupacabra it. And then after that, they have another Dread Presence to follow up with. And then after the next Dread Presence, they find, what do you know? Just like in game number one, all it takes is Cabal Stronghold into Torment of Hailfire. Easy, cheesy, lemon sneezy. Is that how you say it? Is that the, is that the analogy? I don't know. But they even gain some life off timer, which is really, uh, they just kept gaining the life and killing our creatures. They had like seven removal spells that game and I just couldn't. I couldn't attack them. I was trying. <laughs> so uh, going on to the next game, this is against the Simic Gyruda deck. Now, I, this one was a pretty short game, but I didn't speed it. I, I've sped it up because we already had a Simic Gyruda deck um, that we went up against in the non-setup games, and we took it down. Uh, this one, they got their turn their turn four combo because they were on the play. So, you know, they just combo off and then get the Dragon Lord Kulagon and kill us. Um, so the next game we get to be on the play and you know what happens when we get to be on the play We do the aggro shenanigans and get them before they can get me Although it does get it does get really terrifying against the Gyruda deck because they like we need them to whiff if they don't whiff Then we're dead, but I yeah, I ended up uh, they I got too much aggression on them and game number three they get to be on the play Um, but oh, yeah, you see the gift subs going off in the chat right there yeah, so I I commit to a really huge Soul Scar Mage here with the Curious Obsessions, and they're not blocking. Um, and I think this is where they they really need one more mana or whatever. They like they whiff and they need one more mana, and then oh wait no I had just had burn spells. I was thinking of another matchup. Yeah, they they play Garuda. They hit two things and then they whiff, and after the third whiff, that's it. We just untap and burn them out, and that's how it is against Garuda. Is like if you whiff. We won, but we have enough aggression at that point because Simic Gyruda, they do not have um, removal. So we're just free to just burn them out like crazy. So you have to w hit your combos. And if you don't, then we're going to burn you out when we untap. Um, so going on to the very final game of the video. It, the game one went by so fast there, but the opponent is on a Kinnon Bonner Prodigy Storm deck. Kind of like we played in Commander on the channel uh, a couple weeks ago. Now, they were a Paradox Engine Storm deck, so they're able to just, like, keep activating Gyruda, or not Gyruda, Kinnon, and uh, Duskwatch Recruiter, and continually just churn through their entire deck. That's what their deck is based off of. So it was a really cool spicy deck, and I, I wanted to do stuff like this in Commander, but uh, Paradox Engine's banned. And so the way that they do that is, like, they have, like, a Cryptolith right kind of thing going on, but is makeshift, because um, they got Kinnon plus uh, Paradox Engine plus Samut, and Samut is their... Pretty much their pioneer legal version of fervor so it was a really spicy deck and um i'm really glad spoiler alert that it beat us because i i always try to build simic decks like this and you know off stream and just for fun and i i try to brew decks like this and they never work out especially just like for example go back on the channel and look at our our simic top decks deck played it twice on the channel it's a deck in this kind of style where it's just a bunch of mana dorks trying to storm off and um you know, it never really had the perfect setup, but you know, Kinnon and Paradox Engine, it's it's legit. In this game, I was really battling out and trying to get there, but right when they were at three life left, I just didn't find the burn spell, and they got us. So, 
Props to the opponent for having a really spicy deck and probably the coolest deck of the day. Definitely something right up my alley that I would definitely play. All right, so we ended up with five total wins and the deck was like, it was so-so. It was not, it was not bad. It was pretty good. Like, I, I feel like I, if I built this deck again, I'd probably try Bedlam Reveler over Treasure Cruise. I feel like... I, I didn't think that Bedlam Reveler fits so well alongside things like Curious Obsession and stuff, but if the game goes long and your creatures start dying and your Curious Obsession goes to the grave, I think that it's a lot easier to actually delve out a Treasure Cruise rather than it would be to play a Bedlam Reveler. So I kind of stick by my decision, but you can try either or. It really depends. Like, if you're going to go Bedlam Reveler, I would definitely cut Curious Obsessions for something else. And another thing that I really liked was Wizard's Lightning. Sometimes it didn't work because our only wizards are Storm Chaser Mage and Soul Scar Mage. So when we had, like, Monastery Swiss Beer or Sprite Dragon, it was a little clunky. And that was his problem. But it was so good sometimes. So I probably, would, if I built this deck again, I would try going up to a fourth Wizard's Lightning. That is something that I would consider. And, uh, like somebody mentioned at the beginning of the stream... And, like, I considered Adelise the Cinderwind to, like, pump, like, it has prowess and pumps other wizards, like Soulscar Mage and uh, Storm Chaser Mage, when you cast a Dawn Creature spell. And that is pretty cool, but it is a little clunky, you know, because we're only a 19 land deck. We did get a little mana screwed sometimes, being 19 lands only, um, but we also did get a little bit mana flooded, so I don't know whether to go up a land up to 20 or just keep it at 19. Not sure. I guess that's something that's up to you. Um, but maybe 20 would be fine. And just maybe add another another blue-red duel in there. Like one more Sulfur Falls over. Or just add another Sulfur Falls straight up. Something like that. It could work out. Sideboard was fine. No complaints. There's not really a whole lot you can do with the board for a deck like this. Because it's very low to the ground. And you don't have a lot of mana to spend on most things. Um... We didn't get to make too much use of the Brazen Borrower, but I understand there is some matchups where it can be very good. Like when we went up against Black White uh, Sram Auras, and if they commit so heavily to a creature, you can just bounce it back and destroy all their Auras. Uh, but then again, they had Luris to just end up getting everything back because Luris is a busted companion. So yeah, I guess that's about it. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button down below if you did, and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. Let me know a deck idea in the comments down below if you got one. And uh, if you want to pick up today's deck on MTGO, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MARINMOON to save 15% off, and you can rent today's deck on Magic Online and try it out for yourself as well as any future decks we play on the channel. And if you wanted to pick up today's deck in paper, consider purchasing through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and anything you purchase of that link really helps out the channel. Thanks to all the sponsors, the patrons, and the Twitch chat. We're going to get on out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.